Jim Walmsley. I'm from Flagstaff, Arizona in the United States. And for a living, I run for Hoka One One and Wahoo Fitness. I kind of jokingly say I quit running before I started trail running. Um, I ran track and cross country in high school and university. So um, then I started working and basically found myself up in Montana where they didn't have much of a road running scene. And I started getting into trail running and trying to explore kind of what a lot of uh, America and the US and specifically Montana had to offer to go see. And it's just a gorgeous area. So uh, I started just exploring with trails and one thing led to another and I started just doing longer and longer trail races and realizing that's kind of where the sport goes. and leads you to that 100k, 100 mile distance as the cream of the crop and the, the sweet spot to, to really explore and race competitively on the trails. So far, my best result probably has to be Western States 100 in the US. It's 100 miles in California and I've set the course record there and won it three times now. For preparation, I typically do a training block. I try to get kind of focus on volume, so logging kilometers, and then I start logging my climbing and meters, and I try to hit, like gradually build up a bit of strength and toughen my body, and then the month or a couple weeks before the race, I'll fine tune it from there. Um, different races have different things, and usually the faster the race, I'll do more speed work, and then uh, something like this race, I'll kind of just stick to kind of grindy climbing and harder running um, and not change too much. The race recce is a lot of fun. It's definitely a way to enjoy the course and enjoy it differently than what you would see on race day, especially when a course has late hills and climbs or mountains. I think it's particularly important or I've been doing like the furthest point away from where we start, I think it's pretty important here because that's kind of the hot point of the race with a couple of difficult climbs. So I think uh, that's where the race tends to shake out and just kind of knowing that you get a visualize before the race. A typical 100K race can vary a lot for me because I'll do anything from a road 100 which is just over six hours and it's a lot of patience and it's typically really fast. This 100K in Cape Town is probably a little bit closer towards the other side of the spectrum. It's gonna be a lot slower of a course. Uh, it's a really, really early start at 4 a.m. The day before we start getting our, all the nutrition ready for each aid station, try to predict what I'm gonna want, how much I'm gonna need to take with me to the next aid station. I uh, get my headlight charged up the night before, try to go to bed really early and I'll probably wake up around 2 a.m. and uh, start having my morning coffee, a little bit to eat in the morning. Just kind of starting to get awake, but uh, visualizing and staying calm. And then I think this race in itself needs a lot of patience, the first half of it and not getting too excited and pushing too, too much beforehand, but finding a flow that's gonna be sustainable and hopefully build towards the second half of this course because it's definitely more runnable, but this year is really dynamic. So it kind of depends how it shakes out with who's where later in the race. And uh, we'll try to take advantages of my own strengths. A lot of stubbornness drives me in a race. I think a lot of times I end up going out a bit quick and you kind of want to prove that that was the right decision and everybody's gonna talk about it if you collapse late uh but that's endurance running and endurance sport is that happens and sometimes you overcook it but i like that challenge i like pushing myself and seeing if i can get everything out of myself on race day and just give it 110 percent and there's no regrets no matter what happens